This is George from iTech Legion. We see a lot of vacillation in trends as far as CPU cooling goes. Right now we are seeing uh, more of a trend that's going over to quiet cooling. After a barrage of the CLCs making a ton of noise and you know even large air coolers uh, putting out more noise than they probably should have, we're now seeing people wanting to get back into silent type cooling. With lower TDPs coming out on any of the CPUs, that really does open up the door to enthusiast level cooling that can be done passively or semi-passively, which is gonna add not uh, any noise at all or just you know a very, very small amount of noise to your system. Now today we're gonna to take a look at Thermalrite's Macho Zero, which is optimized for semi-passive cooling and can also work passively. Now, of course, we've seen passive coolers in the past. The uh, problem has been either they're absolutely huge, like the Scythe Ninja series, or they simply don't perform very well. But like I say, with the new CPUs that are out there, it really does open up a door for some decent passive cooling. Now, today we're taking a look at the Thermalrite Macho Zero, which, like I say, is optimized for semi-passive cooling. Very, very simple packaging, black box, white line drawing of the Macho Zero itself, and going around the sides, uh, quick look at specs. Not a whole lot to look at, obviously. Um, stands 162 millimeters tall, 140 uh, millimeters wide, so you're not gonna have a problem with it blocking the PCI slot. Um, weighs in at 750 grams, so not terribly heavy either. Also, not overly large. You look at the 140 by 102 by 162, it's not huge for a passive cooler, that's for sure. Not, you know, moving into that Scythe Ninja territory. It's a large cooler, but not absolutely huge. So. Um, obviously DB, zero DBA, no fan, and it, in a semi-passive uh, state, it actually uses a duct which uses your rear exhaust fan, so you're never adding any noise to your system. And of course, it's compatible with sockets 775, the 1150 series, 1366, 2011, as well as AM2, AM3, and FM1, FM2. And finally, moving over to the other side, you get a bit of a line drawing here, once again, showing the uh, available duct for it, easy installation, as well as six six millimeter heat pipes, included fan clips, and no fan included. Now, taking a look at the Macho Zero itself. Very, very interesting design from Thermalrite. Thermalrite's been around for quite some time. Uh, anybody, you know, who's familiar with CPU cooling knows the Thermalrite name. Uh, not huge in the United States at this point, but they are worldwide. A very, very large company and one of the most respected cooling companies around. Now, getting a look at the Macho Zero, like I say, beautifully constructed, really nice black top. As you can see, heat pipe sticking through the top. Interesting design up top with a cutout, uh, obviously, aids in the passive cooling, having the cutout through the fin structure. Now, the entire fin structure itself is aluminum. 0.4 millimeters thick on each fin, 31 fins. So you get a nice looking fin structure here, all finished in black nickel, as are the six six millimeter heat pipes. You've got a C1100 solid copper base, once again, finished in black nickel, with a beautifully polished contact surface, as you see here. You know, mirror polish on the contact surface, really nothing to speak of as far as a mill mark whatsoever. Really nice looking design. Now, as you look at the Macho Zero, as you see, it's got quite the offset here. It sits back quite a bit. So it's not gonna interfere with any RAM slots whatsoever. Uh, even on the back, you've got 45 millimeters. So if you're doing a 2011 um, Intel Extreme build and you've got RAM in the back, you do have 45 millimeters of height back there. So you can use standard size RAM without a problem. But like I say, up front, not gonna block the um, RAM slots in any way, shape, or form. Even with a fan on it, as you'll see, it really doesn't block up the RAM slots. So great looking design here. Really like the black on the top, once again, and the black nickel finish is really well done. Now, uh, one thing you need to know about black nickel, it is a fingerprint magnet, and we're gonna see something interesting in the accessory kit that Thermalrite has uh, to combat that. Now, taking a look at the included accessory kit. First, of course, multi-language installation guide. It's actually very well illustrated, well written, easy to follow, as you see. Good sized pictures, and there is actually writing. You know, we're seeing more and more installation manuals these days without literally a word in them, just diagrams. This has both. Now, all of the installation comes packaged uh, in one single plastic bag, and one thing it does say, please note, 
please read the installation manual and understand it before you start. So read your installation manual, read it through, and then start your installation process. Very interesting. Thermal Right includes an actual screwdriver, and actually a nice quality screwdriver for installing the Macho Zero. And as I had said, there are there is a pair of white cotton gloves in here. Like I say, the um, Macho Zero is a fingerprint magnet. This will keep you from getting fingerprints all over it. One size fits all back plate, retention plate, standoffs, retention bracket, two fan clips so you can add a fan if you so desire, and finally, small tube of thermal interface material. Now, optional accessories, and this is where things get interesting. There are fan ducts available for the uh, Macho Zero, and let's just pop one out. This actually allows you to use your rear exhaust fan on your case to focus air through the Macho Zero. So it becomes semi-passive, not just passive, without adding noise. So you get better airflow through the cooler without adding any noise. It comes in a 120 millimeter or 140 millimeter variety. So you're covered no matter what size case you have and just very simply slips onto the Macho Zero itself and onto the case. And we'll get a look at that in the case as we put it in. The Macho Zero doesn't require any prep work to start the installation outside of the case. However, one thing I will say, if you're going to be adding a fan at any point, put the fan clips on before you install the Macho Zero. Thermal Wright's uh, reputation for having fan clips that are um, kind of a nightmare to deal with is really well-founded. Uh, if you've got the Macho Zero in the case, you're never getting the fan clips on inside of the case. So definitely do it outside, and even outside, it's not the easiest process. So like I say, uh, definitely get the fan, uh, fan clips on prior to doing the installation if you are going to be using a fan. First step getting into the case, we're going to get the back, pl back plate into place. Obviously black metal back plate with a white mylar film that's going to go against your motherboard. Start up, screw is going to go through the back plate and mylar film. Come through the other side, small plastic washer. You want the little nib actually sticking out of the mylar towards the motherboard and do that on all four corners. Obviously in the appropriate slot, AMD, or your 775, 1150, or 1366 all the way on the outside. Lock it into place. Then you're just going to put your back plate onto the back of the motherboard. And we'll move around to the front. With the back plate in place, you can see the screws coming through the motherboard. We are then going to cap those with the standoffs. See right here, they have a rubber washer on one side. Rubber washer goes to the motherboard obviously, and you just want to hand tighten them. Don't want to over tighten. On all four corners. And next, retention bracket. It's going to go into place. Four small screws, as you see. Uh, one of the nice things being the screwdriver is mag tip. Makes it very easy to get them started. And again, you don't want to over tighten these either. Just until you feel them snug up. and put your retention bracket into place. Obviously screws in all four corners. And you do want to make sure you've got your mounting holes front and rear as you see here. Okay, next, as you can see, I've already gone ahead and put on uh, thermal inter interface material. And it's actually got a little bit of a spread because uh, last take we did actually have a bit of a seat, but 
Now, you can take your retention bracket, you're going to go through the center of the heat pipes, as you can see, and put it into place. Use your magnetic screwdriver. You're going to want to go through the hole here, into here, on both sides. So, easiest thing to do, start the front, give it just a tiny bit of a turn, get your second screw, and you're actually going to come through the hole in the center of the heat tower, heat sink tower I should say. And get the second screw started. And then go back and forth, tighten them up. Don't over tighten. When you feel the screw stop, stop turning. And that's it, you're into place. Now getting a look at the Macho Zero in the case, I wanted to get a look at the versatility here. I did add a fan in the front, and as you can see, the Macho Zero will overhang the first RAM slot a tiny bit. Um, and there's not a whole lot of room down there. Standard size RAM will fit. You know, nothing with a heatsink whatsoever is going to fit in that first slot if you add an optional fan. However, taking the fan off and using the Macho Zero, passively or semi-passively, As you can see, I mean, you've got no obstruction whatsoever. It doesn't come close to uh, the memory slots in any way, shape, or form. So you've got perfect clearance. The Macho Zero is not small in the case, but it's not gigantic in the case either. And it's very nice looking in the case. Now, we were talking about the fan duct before. What the fan duct actually allows uh, the Macho Zero to do is use the rear exhaust fan to draw air through the Zero without adding a fan. Now, the fan duct is available separately. I'm gonna show you how that goes on. Uh, personally, I think it's a lot easier to go up top with it. So you can hook the back, then come around, compress it a bit. And then get it set on your back fan. And as you can see, it acts as a duct to seal up that space between your rear exhaust fan and the Zero, forcing the air to come through the Macho Zero. So, very interesting add-on here from Thermalright, and uh, as we're going to see in a couple of minutes, a very, very effective one as far as cooling. Getting a look at the performance, we tested the Macho Zero in three different configurations, completely passively, semi-passively, with uh, the optional fan duct, and with a Thermalright TY-147A 1300 RPM fan. Now, with stock clocks, taking a look at the passive performance, you're a few degrees off, actually four degrees and five degrees from the best coolers in this class, but you're getting really nice numbers uh, for a passive cooler on a 4770K, which is a very hot running chip. So with stock clocks, I mean, you've got no problem keeping the 4770K nice and cool with no added noise. Now, where things get more interesting, uh, going into semi-passive, adding the fan duct, you see a nice four degree drop there. So without a fan on the front, without adding a fan to the system at all and adding no noise to the system, you've now got a cooler that is competing with the best coolers uh, in its price class with no added noise. I mean, that's really impressive. Uh, adding a fan, obviously, you only get a tiny little drop because the fan duct actually does work that well. So you've got some really, really impressive cooling on stock clocks. Now, of course, overclocking, you know, you expect a passive cooler to wilt, but that's really uh, not as much of what we're seeing here as we thought. The uh, Macho Zero passively with a 4.4 gigahertz overclock at uh, 1.21 volts is still keeping the 4770K well within uh, its safety zone and is outperforming a lot of coolers that use fans on this particular chip. Now, once you add the fan duct, once again, you're seeing that 
the uh, Macho Zero, with no added noise, is competing with the best coolers in its price class once again. The NHU-12S, the Cryorig H5, the Fantex 12DX, I mean, these are top-notch coolers, and without a fan, the Macho Zero with the fan duct is absolutely as good as all of them with zero added noise. Again, adding a fan, you do get a drop, and now you're looking at uh, outperforming any of the other three coolers that we uh, checked out in this test. And, you know, the Macho Zero really is putting up an incredible showing here. If you had told me a week ago that, you know, you could... Uh, passively cool a 4770K overclocked, I wouldn't have believed you. But obviously uh, it can be done and the Macho Zero is doing a really nice job of doing it. In every respect, the Macho Zero is really a uh, truly impressive piece. Right out of the box, from top to bottom, the build quality on it is exceptional. Uh, the attention to detail um, is really outstanding and it's absolutely flawless out of the box. Now that extends over into the install kit and into the accessories as well. I've never seen you know such a nice accessory kit included with any cooler. The install kit itself very easy to put in, um, a little bit task oriented but went smoothly into the case without a problem. You get 100% RAM compatibility when it's in the case and even if you're running a 2011, on the rear, you do have 45 millimeters of clearance, so you're going to be able to run standard height RAM. In terms of performance, if you told me I was going to run a 4770K overclocked on a passive cooler and, you know, keep the thermals in a relatively safe zone, I would have thought you were crazy. But the Macho Zero really proved me wrong on that. It did an outstanding job passively. Um, now, you look at that and you think about... A uh, chip that's going to be a little bit better thermally, such as a Devil's Canyon chip, an Ivy Bridge kit, a Sandy Bridge uh, chip, I should say, not kit. And you're going to be looking at some really fantastic performance. You can conceivably put this on a 4790K without a problem. You're going to have very good thermals from it. But where things get really exciting is actually with the fan duct. Adding the fan duct adds absolutely no noise to the system and turns the Macho Zero into a cooler that at that point is as good as anything in its price class. And you still get the 100% compatibility and literally zero noise. I mean, that's really unparalleled in the market at this point. Now, the Macho Zero obviously is taking home a High Tech Legion uh, Editor's Choice Award and is going to get our highest recommendation. If you're looking for something enthusiast level with the lowest noise possible, there's really nowhere else to look. The Macho Zero is really just that good.